Hi there, Danton, Bassin, and all the rest of you uh, good people out there. I hope that you're all safe and sound in these difficult times. Uh, regarding your follow-up question uh, you had there on uh, the smoothing on uh, facet bodies and, and uh, it originates in the problem we have on the screen here where we want to build a transition from the upper part of the convergent body, the blue one or gray one, blue grayish, uh, and connect that to, to the green pipe up there. Uh, the follow-up question on the forum uh, was that we cannot affect sensitive areas um, and kind of make them smaller, uh, such as this uh, kind of down here, I assume, or this up here. And uh, in kind of given those requirements, we'd need to do a limited amount of, of editing here. Uh, now, uh, I was talking about smoothing or remeshing this thing, because uh, the bottom one, uh, we can hide this one, let's suppress that for now, that's just reference, so we can compare before and after. Um, this convergent body here, um, uh, I, I would still probably remesh the inner and outer, but I would do that in, in the case where you have the requirement of not deviating from the original, I would probably still do the remesh, but I would do it with uh, smaller facets in order to get closer to the original shape. Uh, that would give me more uh, kind of ability to handle this. Um, in addition, you can also do this uh, kind of uh, in a limited fashion, in only the area where you want to kind of improve. And in this case, we need to improve the top area, top area here in order to be able to connect to the pipe. Um, so that is basically what we will be doing. But in order to kind of handle this, I will, I will separate these um, uh, sides, kind of the inside and outside, so we can hand them, handle them separately and compare them. So, I will start by unsewing uh, some stuff here. And I'm going to unsew the end uh, caps of the pipes here, which would be a perfect limitation. We're going to hide the exterior. We're going to hide the end caps. There we go. And we can come focus on, on the inner side here. And kind of the first thing I would do here is, uh, actually that would probably be the first thing I would do uh, anyway. It would be to run a pore clean up on, on this guy here. We will run an analyze on this just to check, good or bad. And we can see that this sign is good. So I'm going to keep it as is. Now, I, I happen to know, I actually did this before, and, and I happen to know if you run it on the whole thing here, you get uh, you get two errors there that you need to fix. And those might uh, kind of affect the uh, kind of transition as well. But uh, nevertheless, this is what I would do anyway. Um, so we're also going to delete the face up here uh, because we're going to we're going to build this as surfaces and sew it together rather than unite it. Uh, and that is due to the fact that that will uh, provide a more robust uh, solution. Uh, now with that said, we will also analyze visually the facets and we can see that this is not an X facets. This is uh, coming from a scan. This down here, yes, this would be NX facets. So this part is probably built in NX. Uh, this is probably a scan. And um, I would kind of try to avoid uh, these sharp elements, these sharp points on, on the facets, uh, on these elements. And that is why I'm kind of, that is kind of why I want to push you towards to remesh this thing. Uh, and, and there are several ways to do that. Um, we will have a look at uh, polygon modeling and remesh, of course. Uh, this will also enable you to resize the elements um, 
kind of in here. So I'm gonna start in one area here. Let's say uh, we grab these guys here. And you can see that uh, we can't do that directly on this part, so we're gonna have to do it on a copy. My mouse is playing tricks on me here with double clicks, although I'm doing a single click. Uh, so you're gonna have to bear with me. And uh, I'm gonna decrease the size here. I'm gonna say 0.2. You can go even smaller, but and that will follow even more. Uh, but that means that you will basically have heaps of facets on each of these bigger facets and sharp edges. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to allow for deviation of 0 0.05. Uh, 0 0.05. Uh, since the deviation that you were allowing for were somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters. So I just picked, so you can go smaller, but I just picked a, a value there that I thought would be um, suitable. I have a deviation plot and we can do a show results on that. We can see that the worst, uh, worst deviation we have here is 0.02. Uh, so that would be within bounds. Uh, I would say, and you can see the elements, how they uh, kind of uh, are organized. And if we do an OK to that and remove the highlight on that, we can see that, uh, yeah, those elements looks a lot better than, than the original ones. So we go ahead and do uh, the rest as well. We're going to remesh uh, kind of around this rim up here. And uh, we just pick an area. I'm going to do that uh, kind of uh, eyeballing it. And we're going to go across so we meet the, the rest of those. And uh, there we are. And we're going to go 0.2 there as well. We get a nice consistent value there. And we say OK to that. So that should give me something which looks rather nice. Now we can see that this edge up here is rather wobbly. And we know that I have uh, kind of remeshed with smaller element size to these facets here, which means that a change to that edge will only affect very, very locally uh, and, and not globally on the model, which is good. So I can actually now do a smooth on just that edge. You can use obviously the, ed uh, the, the mesh itself or elements on it. But you can also use the edge. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do. And uh, we can do a show to see what happens, uh, for, for instance, down here. It's going to smoothen that up a bit. And uh, I would say that that would be OK. So that's what I would do. If you need something that would be following even more precise, well, add more elements. So. Uh, the inner shape here is uh, kind of uh, fixed. Uh, now we need to connect the inner shape down here with the uh, actual uh, original cylinder uh, shape up here. And we're going to do that by first creating some supporting curves. And we're going to do that by using bridge curves. So from this rim uh, point down here, uh, this is kind of a triangular element here. I will use uh, three supporting curves, one starting here, one starting here, and one starting here. And I will divide the uh, circular element up there in, in the similar way. So looking at it, this should be down here somewhere, let's say. We say OK to that. And uh, we're going to start a new one up here from down here. Now these are not tangent in here, but they're tangent enough according to me. If you need them more tangent, well then you need to create something so you can uh, uh, have this curve uh, running into this surface tangently. But as I said, I'm happy with that. Um, let's do a connection up here and that's going to be over here somewhere. Let's see here now, that, that's going to be up here. There we go. Uh, so we're going to buy third one will be over here somewhere. So we do that and we do the last one here as well. We're going to add that to this point there. We're going to let it run all the way up here. We're going to reverse that. 
and we're going to say that that is fine. Uh, with those prerequisites, we're going to create a through curve mesh. We're going to grab the face down here and edge of the face down there as primary in this one. And then we're going to start selecting the curves, so cross curves. Start with this one, continue with that one, this one, and then connecting them at the end. Here we go, might want to turn that around. And uh, yeah, that looks good to me. So we're gonna make sure that that is a sheet as well. Yep, that's a sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. So perfect. Uh, let's hide that guy and let's see if we can uh, bring back uh, only the exterior there because we're gonna do the same thing here. And we're gonna continue with our bridge curves. Uh, we're gonna continue uh, on this guy here. And we're gonna connect that to up here. And that is gonna be uh, located approximately on the similar same area uh, on, on that uh, circular element there. And we continue by next. It's gonna be down here somewhere there to exterior rim up here and that's going to be around here somewhere uh, sorry that's not going to be there that's going to be here and it's going to be uh, up there we're going to swap that around and we're going to position that there we go much better so this will be somewhat thickness, controlling the thickness, ensuring that we have an inner and outer and that they are not like in a touching uh, area, but rather a, a, a consistent thickness to this. So we need one here down here as well. Uh, that's going to connect down here to there, turn that around. And I'm quite happy with that. Um, again, a uh, not through curve, a through curve mesh uh, with this guy, this guy, turn that around. A cross curves is going to be this guy, this, not that guy, that guy, that guy, and we're going to have to connect it to the last string there as well. So we get that together. And it's not going to be solid, it's going to be sheet. So, okay. There we go. Uh, I would say that that is what I want, so I'm gonna accept that. Uh, we need the end caps of uh, these uh, feet here, or whatever we should call them. And it's time to sew this together. So we sew that guy with that guy, with the inner, with that guy, that guy, that, that, and that and we sew them together. And hopefully we should have a solid uh, as a result here. So we check this by doing a section and it seems like uh, we are missing a piece here. And uh, that should not be obviously. Let's delete that guy and let's see. Well, looks like the inner was missing in my sewing operation. So I have that blank. No wonder it's still a saw, uh, sheet. Uh, remove the section and we do redo the uh, sew operation. So we sew all these guys together. And we go back and check with that section clip there again. And we can see that, yep, yeah, it's now a solid. And we have only modified the very local area here. Uh, the rest is actually the same, same parameterization, although I would probably do the uh, remesh of that. And uh, I guess uh, that's kind of where you want to go if you do not want to touch by smoothing too much in, in this um, pipe here, which might, kind of uh, give it a, 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 well, that pipe might be a little bit narrower and, and uh, that is uh, something that you kind of definitely want to avoid. So uh, what I would say is uh, still remesh, do it locally, 
um, utilize smooth also locally uh, smaller facets will give less impact on the geometry uh, so locally create smaller facets you can do that by either well basically you should do it by um, remesh that will optimize the uh, the faces you could also do a subdivide um, but remesh is definitely what i would recommend in this case now i hope that this is something that will help you in your future endeavors in helping what i assume would be those patients uh, where these medical uh, scans come from which is a fantastic good course uh, and i love those good courses so um, with that i'm going to wish you luck good luck and uh, uh, to all you good people out there um, stay safe uh, stay sound and above all stay healthy over and out from fred bye for now